I, I like to start with uh, you know something that happens during the week, and then if it's worth talking about, it's it's good to touch on. I thought it was interesting what, and I'm not into politics, so don't get me wrong. Hillary Clinton talking about uh, the GOP being worse than the terrorist, um, which any logical thinking person would think that's just bizarro. Um, but what was interesting is what she was talking about, the, the GOP wanting to round people up and put them on buses and boxcars and put them in camps and ship them off. Now, that was interesting that she said that, number one, because, well, it's false, number one. But she's basically justifying what's going to happen to us by saying, this is what they wanted to do to you, so I don't blame you if that's what you want to do to them. In other words, she's not only demonizing them, she's trying to say they're out to get you and they're going to put you in buses and in boxcars and send you to camps when that's what they've been planning for quite some time now. I'll let you know a little story. Um, I was working as a civilian on battlefield. That's that's people who you know work to help train the troops and you dress up like either Afghanis or Iraqis or something like that and you live in these little villages and then the troops come through and they have different perce- uh, you know, different scenarios where they have to search for things or inquire about things and just a plethora of things that they need trained for. But uh, they have you know civilians that can go there and, and help train or whatnot. And I've done that for several years. And this one time, um, we was working at this place, and it was a big event they had down south to where they had like a whole city of people uh, in this exercise. Mm -hmm. And the thing that was really uncanny about it was it was dark. You know, it's like 5 o'clock in the morning. It's real dark. And we was all on the buses, and me and three of my friends were sitting like right behind the bus driver. He was a military guy. And he looked up in his mirror, you know, didn't turn around or anything. And he looked at us and he said, I just want to let you know this is going to happen. He what? goes, and I'm serious as I can be. And he goes, this is going to happen soon. Oh. And I tell you what, I got chills in the back of my neck and everybody, you know, my other buddy, we talked about it. We still talk about it to this day, how freaky that was because it's, it's not like he was wanting to spill the beans or say anything, but he wanted to let us know that this is going to happen and the scenario was, you know, uh, there was some kind of a emergency. They had to round up all the people and put them on buses. We didn't get in boxcars or anything, but they put you in, in places where you're safe because there's people that's wanting to raid your, your, your town or whatnot. And for your protection, they've got to, like, coordinate off and, and all this stuff. So wow. that's just a little tidbit of information that uh, I would like to throw in there as far as what their plans are. And, you know, the buses and the boxcars and the, the rail stations are building, the FEMA camps are building, and the guillotines are ordering, all that stuff. That's real world stuff. Now, whether or not it actually takes place, uh, time will tell. But if they're planning for it, if they're purchasing the equipment, if they're building the places, something's getting ready to go down. Something major. Yeah, yeah. And <clears throat> people, you know, on the fringe seen have been talking about that forever you know i mean what is the deal they've been ordering these you know coffins and whatnot and box cars and you said the guillotines i mean that's is that all real or is it just kind of a smoke screen that people are saying is happening because i mean alex jones talks about it so is it you know is it really true (laughs) it's 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 a real attempt let's put it that way whether they're successful or not uh it's remains the scene but it's it's real, I mean, because it's the, the stuff is there that you can see for yourself. Um, I mean, when you understand what their, what their game plan is and what they've already tried to do in the Middle East with these different countries, it's not above them. And when you see a movement going on, well, first it was hands up, don't shoot, but that got shot down. So they're like, uh, how about Black Lives Matter? It's the same black liberation ideology it's black supremacy basically what it is and that's what they have in common with islam is because islam is a supremacist ideology mm. i was and, wondering uh, what the what what the when correlation you, when you underst- no it's 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 the whole black liberation movement that you used to hear about but then it kind of died down and they got a new name and a, a, a the movement's all the same it's financed by the same it has the same same agenda it's 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 exactly like what our government did in egypt 
where they paid protesters. They caused civil unrest. They caused riots and protesting, basically an insurrection. Uh, they called an uprising or antifada or, you know, jihad, whatever you want to call it, to try to overthrow the government. Because the whole goal of the United Nations and this new world order is to establish Islamic socialism. I say Sharia socialism, where they abolish the constitutions of men. And it's a global Sharia socialism because the Muslims wouldn't have any other kind of rule unless it's Islamic law. So the United Nations Global Peace Plan incorporates Islam since it's socialism anyway. And they're really wanting to pr you know, push socialism, but they're using Islam to accomplish those deeds. So when you know you have the United Nations behind it and every president since Ronald Reagan on board doing the will of the United Nations trying to establish this new world order, all the things I've been talking about makes perfectly good sense. I mean, and it's one of those things to where you can see it right now when you have somebody who should be in jail like Hillary Clinton, or in my, my opinion, shot for treason, okay, and by a firing squad legally, you know, tried by a jury of appeals, peers, whatever. But there should be justice be done for that kind of treason. I mean, Americans are giving up their rights and freedoms in exchange for security, and our national security is being you know, compromised by somebody who says that it's a matter of convenience for her. Okay. And, and we're, get, we're supposed to give up all our rights and freedoms in the, in the namesake of national security, but yet you can have one person risk the lives of the whole nation and it's no big deal. And then you're going to have that person, you know, say something like uh, conservatives are equal to terrorists. Well, no wonder they're not trying to stop the genocide. They think that it, ISIS is no more than just Republicans. Well, how does she, I mean, if that's what she, they really think, and that's what she's saying. You said that she's um, jeopardizing the safety of the nation. How's she doing that? Well, because, number one, she takes money from other countries. Therefore, she's beholden to whatever they want to do. Using a private server, okay? And, and you know what kills me? Just about everything that Obama does, it's like, well, Bush did it. And, you know, so Hillary says, well, Colin Powell did it. Well, there's pictures of Colin Powell with Farrakhan. So, mm. you know, just because they did it doesn't mean it's right. It means they also need to do an investigation to the Bush administration, and find out what Colin Powell was behind and who he was working with and why he risked our national security. And why is it, whether it's Republican or Democrat, these clowns are risking our national security. Meanwhile, they're telling us to give up everything that we own, basically, and all our rights and security and privacy in exchange for security which they care nothing about. To the contrary, they're trying to eliminate it, obviously. So, you know, it, you know, Hannity jokes about, you know, the Russians know about it and the Chinese probably got her all the information off of her server. You know, she's, her and Obama both got Iranian uh, top dogs working for them. They're, you know, they get all their information from and consolation from. So it's, it's, it's nothing but high treason when you think about it. But to have a person like her, you know, to demonize us for what she's guilty of. And that's what I wrote in a post. I said, the people that are more like the terrorists are the ones who's actually aiding and assisting and, and arming the Islamic terrorists. That's the ones who's most like the terrorists. And it's not, and I'm not Republican or Democrat. They're both guilty parties. They both, they both are guilty parties. That's, that's the bottom line. They're the divided house and a house that's divided won't stand. I'm surprised that and you even pay attention to Stephen. I mean, like it's like the whole thing's just a scam. Like I'm surprised that you even follow it. I mean, it's just lies after lies. I mean, scam after scam. You know, like oh, you said, they're set. It's everything just like they do is rap music when I was young. It's like what? It was like when I used to follow rap music and watch the rap videos back when they had Rap City and MTV Raps. Right, yo. You know, I was like, what? Why? Why are you watching that for? It's like. Because you won't believe the information they're putting on these. These Islamists are financing these hip-hop groups. Okay, and that was part of the movement back then. Okay, and like one of the videos I saw, you know, he had these little Muslim kids. And they're the, you know, they, they had on the news not too long ago about this pig dressed up like a cop. At, you know, they was, and they was like, oh, but then we're talking 20 years ago. I mean, they had a pig on a table with a nap on its mouth, you know. And you had these two Muslim kids shaking their, their hands at it, saying no, and shaking their heads no. And on the side of the pig was written Christianity. Okay, now this is on MTV Raps, okay? Who was and these that? Are the, Do you know? The, the groups. Um, I don't know. They 
had a different name, but most most of the groups, if you ever watch Rap City or whatnot, somewhere I've got VHS tapes that just taped a bunch of these different things. That's just like unbelievable. Even if you saw them now, you say what? But I mean, this was this was the kind of movement. And, I mean, Indianapolis public schools invited, you know, uh, Public Enemy. There was like, like three different rappers they invited to the school for a convocation to just say no to drugs type thing. That's that was their format they was using for coming into the school to educate the kids on. But it was nothing but trying to indoctrinate them to this Islam. They had Public Enemy. I mean, at, they was giving an Meridian? No, Indianapolis Public Schools. Oh, IPS. Uh, okay. I'll, 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 yeah, I'll have to get with you sometime because I wrote letters to the editor and I actually stopped uh, some of the groups from coming actually to the school or whatnot once I presented what they was actually teaching. And then once they got kind of busted on it, then they canceled it. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is this is back in the days. And, and I, you know, I, I kept all the letters to the editor and explaining exactly what was going down here. I mean, because... You know, my kids are in school and, you know, they're, they're bringing home little awards for memorizing stuff. And, you know, it's like Malcolm X button and stuff like that. And it's like, what in the world is going on? You know? Right. I, I mean, I so, guess yeah, it's, it's, it's because been going on for some time. I guess it's because there's bl- there's black people in IPS. Like we're we went to, you know, uh, Perry Murdy. You know, there wasn't too many black people there. That, so they didn't teach that. I guess. Is that why they, they did it at IPS? They thought it'd be more culturally relevant or something well no it's like indiana is like a testing grounds for a lot of things besides just potato chips i mean it's a testing ground for a lot of different things that's why the hudson institute the uh, think tank was here when goldsmith was here when they was trying to find a way around the constitution to establish their faith-based initiatives because the state had already been caught illegally funneling tax dollars to the roman catholic archdiocese while at the same time they bulldozed the Baptist temple because of tax um, violations, you could say. So they was in a pickle, and I was broadcasting exactly what was going on. You got the Build Indiana Fund, which is actually funneling money to the Roman Catholic Archdiocese. Meanwhile, they're attacking Baptist temple, which, you know, that's where I had my son placed for private schooling because I had to pull him out of IPS because of the religious instruction and me challenging it and then taking my kid for a weekend I had to put him in private school. So I put him in the Baptist temple. And of course, you know, they was talking smack about Clinton at the time and, and Bush after that. And it just, uh, they came and seized the church and then they bulldozed it. So here you have a state that's giving preference to the Catholics while they're bulldozing the Protestant places of worship. It didn't look good. So the Hudson Institute and Stephen Goldsmith, they all came away, come up with this grand idea on how to, tiptoe around the constitution and be able to funnel money to religious organizations, tax dollars. And uh, Bush was so impressed with that, that he, you know, took Stephen Goldsmith, Mayor Stephen Goldsmith to Washington. So they get implemented on a national level. And that's how the faith-based initiatives got started because they was basically breaking the law. So they had to change the law. So they didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> that's crazy. Mm. That's crazy, man. It is crazy. But I'm just saying, Indiana is a place for testing, and the reason IPS, yeah, it's predominantly you know blacks in IPS, but they also had Julia Carson as a representative at the time, and right on 38th Street is the Nation of Islam's you know headquarters, whatnot. There's a big Islamic influence in there, and that's when they tried to start implementing Islamic instructions into IPS, and so the hip hop group was you know right in line with that whole attempt of trying to change the course of America, basically. Yeah. In Indianapolis public schools. And that's why they have representative Andre Carson, who's a Muslim and who has ties with the Muslim brotherhood and who, I don't know their, their geniusness thought that it was a good idea to put somebody like that in a fusion center. Fusion center is like a law enforcement center that it's like a hub for all the different agencies so they can coordinate all the information Mm. And they put them in key places like that. So that kind of tells you exactly um, what they're attempting to do. And when you understand the ideology of the Islamist of total eradication of those who say that God beget us unchristians, Christians, um, then, then this idea of, you know, government assisting them in that, it seems like far fetched and never happened. Well, your government is already assisting the Islamist commit genocide worldwide on Christians. 
So well, I don't know what makes you think you're special, but there's not a whole lot stopping them from doing what they want to do. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, that's what, that's what, yeah, I guess that's what I'm saying. That's why I don't even, I don't spend time keeping up with the news and stuff just because it's, you know, it's all just you can't so, half of it. <laughs> you can't, yeah, you can't believe any of it. And the other half of somebody who's a personal agenda. Exactly. Right. Right. Even if, yep. if, even if you can see through it or whatever, I mean, you're still going away from it, not, you know, really understanding what's going on. You still feel swindled. Yeah. I don't know. I don't, I don't read that stuff. But I believe it, you know. I stopped paying attention well, most, to those politics. Most, most of my stories aren't aren't the news. Most of my stories right. are the news. In other words, my story, my personal stories, whether I I watch news or not, my personal stories was just involved in the stuff that's that's on the news. I yeah, you know, okay. even, I see even, what you're even, saying. You could even get truth from liars, John. I mean, you can even get the truth from liars, especially compulsive liars like like Obama and Hillary. Uh, right. I mean, you can pretty much once you understand their pattern and trend, then all you got to do is just believe the opposite of what they're saying and that's the truth <laughs> yeah 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 that was one of the reasons why i am interested in this stuff i have seen that before yeah it's like whatever whatever they're doing you can kind of reverse it and and that's, that's the truth the but yeah so let's get on let's get back to some more of your um last time a couple of times ago we've been talking about tecumseh and um the locations of certain sacred things in indiana and you were wanting tonight, and I'm, I'm going to mangle it because I don't understand it totally, but my understanding is you wanted to talk about locations of kind of portals to the underworld in Indiana or how spirits come and go uh, in our realm of reality, something like that. Well, the bottomless pit, like I was bottomless saying. Bottomless pit, that's it. Yeah, on, or, or the abyss. Um, on all the, the previous shows, like I've said before, if it's if it's mentioned in the word to me, it has to be a physical place on the planet, and everything's explainable if you just know what they're talking about. So the bottomless pit, everybody thinks, oh, bottomless pit. Now, how's that even possible? And by reasonable, logical understanding, you would think it is impossible. Even the, even the Romans believed in the bottomless pit where the, the dead uh, would go. Um, but the Bible talks about this bottomless pit, and it also talks about this in time beast is going to you know come out of this pit and it's also the place where satan gets bound and put into the pit so i, I know that sounds like well that's that's a little heavy but check this out okay the bottomless pit to have a bottomless pit and and what's going to be mind-blowing is this isn't my my explanation or my idea okay this is this is their own beliefs okay Wh whose beliefs uh, Islam. Islam. Islam has a bottomless yeah. pit. Yeah. Now, now you got to you got you got to remember, Muhammad came along about 660 years after Christ to establish Islam as we know it today. Allah, the God that he adopted from the, all the pagan tribes as the one God, was actually the supreme pagan deity of pre-Islamic Arabia. He was a God who beget, you know, three daughters. Okay, he was very pagan and sacrifices and all this stuff and goes back to Baal and, and the Egyptians and the Babylonians. And basically, it's it's all the same astral worship, sun, moon, and star worship. Um, but anyway, there is a location in Mecca where the, the cube sits. It's the Kaaba. And it's pretty much what you was talking about as far as Saturn's cube goes. That's what that is. Mm -hmm. Because all the religions, if you go back to... Saturnia, or whatever you want to call it, the circle with a dot in the middle of it is not only the symbol of the sun, it's the symbol of Saturn, it's a symbol of the eye, and it's also a symbol of their God. Anyhow, and that's why they make circuits, you know, like uh, when they go on the pilgrimage in Mecca, they all go around, you know, counterclockwise around the cube in Mecca, that's their pilgrimage. Right. And they try to touch the cornerstone, which is interesting because it's a meteor that is encased in silver, and they believe that if they touch this stone, that that stone has the power to remove their sins. So when you see the comparison that, you know, Islam was founded on Antichrist, and they rejected the cornerstone, and their cornerstone represents the moon with silver, and it has this, you know, rock, because they're rock worshipers, and it removes their sins. In other words, it's the exact counterfeit and a replacement of what Christ is. But anyhow, this, this this structure, they say, was there, you know, long before Muhammad came along, that was there since ancient times. And they, they even claim that Abraham built it, but, you know, 
whatever. The cube, the cup, what's it called? The Kaaba. K A, and then it's got a little, one of those little, I don't know what they call them. Right. A little dot, and then A B A. Kaaba. And it's the house of Allah. In ancient times, the reason they built that house is there was a pit there, okay? And they believed at that time the pit was bottomless because they could see no bottom, they could hear no bottom, and they used to throw sacrifices down into this, this hole or whatnot. Now, here's the interesting part. According to Islamic uh, belief, they believe the invisible, infinite axis of the universe runs directly through there. You know how you have like an axis on the earth, you know, it's an invisible axis, but it's still there's an, there's an axis there. Right. Well, they believe that there is an invisible infinite axis of the universe as well, and it runs directly through this pit. Okay? And where is that pit located? In inside the cube. It's inside the cube. Yeah. Wow. And and um in ancient times they used to throw sacrifices down to it, and then when Muhammad took it over, he took all the idols of all the different tribes or whatnot, and he threw them down into the pit because they don't believe in graven images. You know, they got to have some kind of truth to get you to believe the lie. But anyhow, that's where they, they threw them down into this pit. The interesting thing is, is once you understand there's a pit there inside that cube. But how did they and throw a person the, into a cube? No, inside the cube, inside the house, inside the Kaaba is the pit. Okay. And but they used to throw sacrifices into the pit. When you see them, that image of the Islamic people all running around that cube, that's not the place that they're throwing people. No, the, the pit is not there anymore. Actually, okay. they got a place underneath where you can actually walk underneath, and it's like a you know transportation for people. It's like an airport underneath of it. Whoa, but in oh. ancient, but in ancient times, there was a pit there. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, I missed that. I'm sorry. So underneath where the Kaaba is, there's a that, that's where the bottomless pit used to be. They used to throw these people in. Yeah, inside okay. in, inside that building, inside that building, there used to be a pit, and that's the whole purpose of that cube is, you know, because that pit is a special place, because they believe that the clay of their messenger Muhammad came from that pit. Hmm. So here's what's the interesting thing: number one, you have a false prophet because he's the prophet of Islam, which is Antichrist. Okay, so he's a false prophet. Right. And they believe that the clay of the messenger came from within that pit. In other words, that was his birthplace. They used to also call it the navel of the earth, like the belly button of the earth. Um, and they believe that that's where he came from. So what's the chances of having a pit located where the infinite invisible axis of the universe runs directly through it? Because if there's an invisible infinite axis running through something, especially a pit, it would be bottomless. I mean, if it's the axis of the universe, think about it. <laughs> well, is it, no though? Is, no it, is it really the axis of the universe? I mean, they also believe in... There's no way, there's no way of in that. Right. But I mean, that, so are you but, suggesting that that is the place, that's where the bottomless pit is? Absolutely. Okay. Without a doubt. Uh, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, everything that's in Scripture that's spiritual has to be in a physical realm and a physical reality. Okay? And for, for their, their own religion to declare that their prophet came from this pit, which according to its location <laughs> with the infinite axis, makes it a bottomless pit because that's the only way it could be a bottomless pit is to have a pit located within this infinite invisible axis. Right. And they believe that the clay of the messenger ascended from that pit. So you actually have a pit, okay, and it's bottomless, and that's where their prophet came from. So you have a scripture talking about a, a false prophet that ascends from a bottomless pit. Well, there you go. Wow. So this, that's so if that's the, the location of the bottomless pit, what is going on there right now? I mean, well, the, is that the, where the are isn't there supposed to be something chained up there? Like didn't didn't Jesus No, that's where that's where Satan gets chained and cast back in for a thousand years. See, that's what I was talking about as far crawl, as the, stuff the, crawls up out of the bottomless pit in Revelation, right? Like stuff gets unleashed from the bottomless pit, does it not? Yeah. It, well, you got to understand it's its point of origin and it's also its point of return. Like I was talking about in the other shows, how demons, you, 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 you can't do anything with them except send them back where they came from. You know what I'm saying? Right. So they have to go back from the, from whence they came. You understand Satan gets bound for a thousand years 
and put in back into the box. It's like Pandora's box. That's a good way of looking at it. It's like Pandora's box. Right. And for a thousand years, he gets bound and put back into that box from whence he came out of. From the pit, because that's the pit from which he comes out of. I and mean, that's the pit he goes back into. And that's like when I was, I was talking about the, uh, the tree of knowledge and how it's in the beginning. And when you look at time, it says with God, a day is as a thousand years and a thousand years is as a day. So when you take the six day creation of what God was talking about, then you're talking about 6,000 years in our time. So basically we are going through the process of creation, except we're at the end of it now. We're at the end of the six days. We're at the end of the 6,000 years. So we're going to enter into our thousand years of rest or our Sabbath or our millennium, as they call it which is like Christ, uh, God taking the, you know, the seventh day and resting on the seventh day after the six days of creation, which explains everything down here as far as where did we come from, you know, as far as this planet's age, how can, how can the story be about 6,000 years when this earth is a lot older than that? But if you follow up on that and you see that in the end, we go to a new heaven and a new earth, it happens all over again. So as I believe, as we're sitting here right now talking, all those other stars up there are suns that have the possibility of having the same kind of life that that is on this planet. And we go to a new heaven and a new earth. That's when he establishes the first man and the first woman again on that planet. Because Adam means man or mankind, basically. And he establishes them on a planet. And right now, that planet could have dinosaurs on it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, right, I mean, right. it could have the same kind of life that this this planet has currently going on right now while we're here. But in a different time sequence, like, you know, like more primitive, like, you know, dinosaurs and whatnot on it. And then there's an interjection of this seed of God, the first real man and the first real woman. And, you know, there might be other primitives or other you know, homo sapiens or Neanderthals or other kind of creatures on there at this time because life is life, but it's not the life like what we have where we are born of God, sons and daughters of God, made in his image, to where it's in, interjected onto the planet and it starts all over again. That's the only way you can have eternity be eternity. I mean, that makes a lot of sense. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, yeah. So, are you okay? Well, oh, so yeah. If, if that, I mean, uh, if that's true. We go to the, you're saying the new heaven and the new earth is just the next, um, you know, earth, like just the next round. Like, I don't know, in the Matrix, when he meet when Neo meets the guy that's behind the Matrix, you know, he tells him, he tells Neo that this is the fifth or sixth, you know, system that he's created, you know, and it's kind of exactly like what you're saying. Do, right. do you think that if, so, w- we get to go and be on on the next round of Adam, and hopefully we don't fall this time. Is that kind of what it is, or no? It's, it's I believe it's 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 pretty much the same thing. Well, because it's supposed it's, to be perfection, though, right? It's not supposed to be another temptation thing. Like Satan's not going to be there. It's going to be paradise, right? It's not going to be another. Hopefully, Adam doesn't get tempted because we know he's going to no, fail. The story, it's, story remains the same the story remains the same and it's like it's like sitting here talking to you right now is this the first time it happened is it the is it the 16th time it happened is it the last time it's going to happen or well, does the, it happen forever the bible you know talk, what I'm saying? right but revelation like the or at least and correct me if i'm wrong about this but you know the, the christian doctrine is generally accepted that you know we all end up in a paradise right for eternity we don't come back to earth we don't go right. to we, another earth we go to paradise forever and that's it no we go to a new heaven and a new earth right yeah new heaven yeah it says that too it says there's gonna be new but, heaven, new earth but but are we going to repeat the same things is there going to be christ repeating th- i don't see that i don't see that happening i mean i don't i don't see that actually happening as far as everybody does the same thing over again. But, you know, like the spirit beings that are in paradise. I mean, I'm worried about paradise when paradise gets there. I don't think I'm going to have any problems with whatever the rules are or regulations are (laughs) or what the reality of it is. Like right now is the the tricky part. But he says we go to a new heaven and a new earth. And I mean, if he wants to, he could start all over again. I'm saying 
with this earth and the age of the earth and the evidence of how old the earth is, the story is still true if you look at it as in a six-day creation story and it being 6,000 years equaling the six days. Now, maybe the very first time it was exactly six days in, in our time frame in mind as far as it goes, but when it talks about God with God, time is like that. And they give that example. A day is as a thousand years and a thousand years is as a day. And if it's a six day creation story, then it's 6,000 years. And that's just, that's scripture there. <laughs> There's no debating it or getting around it. It is. I, it, it is. Um, people say, use that a lot. I, I think that one way to interpret that is not literal in that it's a, you know, one day equals a thousand years to God. I, I, I take it more as a, you know, don't even, don't worry about time with God. You know, one year is like a thousand years to him, you know, ooh, like right. not exactly a one year equals 1000 to God. I don't, you know what I mean? But that's but just there, another, there, uh, everything, everything in the that. word, everything in the word though is for a reason. And you'll understand that reason usually in the end. Right. But you know, I know exactly what you're saying. It's just saying with God, there is no time, but with God, there, there absolutely is time because there's a time when it's like, there'll be no more time. There's a time when you pour out the wrath, there's a time for harvest. I mean, he set up seasons and times for a reason. <laughs> yeah. So, so he, he definitely has, has time, but he's, he's not going to have his word proven to be a lie. If you've got dinosaurs and the evidence of, of life being on this planet, Mm, you know, a lot more than a lot older than six thousand years. Well, that's that's really easy to say. Well, that's that's not true. But if it's a creation story to where things are still being created, <laughs> and you still have a serpent in the garden, okay, and you have the very end of the story where Satan gets cast out and cast down to earth, and he's saying, "Woe to the inhabitants of the earth, for the devil's being cast down to you." But he's been down here all along. Then we obviously obviously are are still in the garden, <laughs> so to speak, or we re re return to the garden. And say. I, I know what you're saying. Yeah. A I think a lot of people would look at that and say, those say that's a contradiction. Oh, look, the Bible, look, the Bible contradicts contradiction. itself. Right. That's not the only explanation. You know, you got to think outside of the box, outside of the cube, you know? Yeah. It could be, you know, that, that, that well, exactly what you said. And I can't even wrap my mind around it, but I know what you're saying. You're saying that we're still in, in the garden. We're still in the process I'm, I'm of saying being, I'm, I'm saying we're basically that story of Adam and Eve to where you've, you now have a tree of life. Okay. Before Christ, there was no tree of life. Even though there was a tree of life in the garden, it was inaccessible. There was no need for it because there was no fall of man, you know, because after Adam and Eve sinned and was partakers of this forbidden knowledge and obeyed the serpent's voice and were cast out, then Christ came and then the tree of life was established. And that's why he said, now, if they only stretch forth their hand and partake of the tree of life, can they have eternal life? You see what I'm saying? But that couldn't be there in paradise until Christ actually became that tree of life. Mm. Is the tree of life still on earth? Well, when you consider the tree of life being that which is pretty much everything, as far as if it's the only way for eternal life, it represents Christ as the only way to eternal life, and he is the tree, and you know, just like the Jews were cut off so we could be grafted on, it's all symbolic of the trees from the root of David. It's all symbolic of, of Christ as the tree of life that was in the garden that was available that if you stretch forth your hand, in other words, he's not going to force you. You have to accept it. You have to reach for it. You have to obtain your salvation by partaking of the tree of life instead of take because you already have taken the fruit of the tree of knowledge. See, that was the purpose of the tree of life was to cancel the curse of the, of the tree of death of the tree of forbidden knowledge, which is the combination of good and evil. That's why it's the tree of knowledge of good and evil. It wasn't a, an apple tree or a fruit. It was showing you this tree, this evil tree, this tree that you're not supposed to be partaking of is that tree of combining opposites. And that's the whole source of power for all these secret societies and fraternal organizations is that Hegelian dialect of taking thesis and antithesis and combining it together creating and controlling conflicts to produce wealth. 
and that's the Hegelian dialect. And that's what pagans do, and that's why the pagans got the power, because they got the Hegelian dialect, because they're using the sorcery and high magic of combining the pure with the profane. That is the tree of knowledge. That's the, what the serpent offered man as a temptation in return for their obedience, that he would enlighten them, that he would give them this power to be equal to God. And now you have a nation's capital where you have the founder declare himself to be equal to God. Are you telling me he didn't obey the serpent's voice? <laughs> yeah. And that's the fall of man. So, you know, a lot of people say, well, it's not fair that one man sinned and all of us is cursed. It's like, well, if you understand the big picture of it, you'll see that mankind in this six day period or this creation of 6,000 years it took, he had a tree of life in the garden and he had a tree of forbidden knowledge in the garden. And they obviously partook of the tree of knowledge of good and evil because, well, the tree is there for you to see for yourself that it is pleasant to behold, that it has the ability to speak, that it does give them power and authority to rule. <laughs> and that's why they always put their markers everywhere they go. Harrison and all the other Masonic you know, generals, whenever they had battles, why do you think they always put the obelisk there? Yeah, why did they do that? You know, and, and you're saying because that was what they had, that's what they, that's their God. That's their, that's their, that's their claim to fame. That's, that's their home. That's their, that's their deity. That's, that's how they roll. Yeah. That's, that's the only way they can have their God come to earth is if they put a mooring post there. And, and it's, it's not only an erect phallic symbol, you know, to pen, penetrate the queen of heaven, but it's also a mooring post for the gods and their ships to moor to, to where they ascend down through that. So that's not only um, a phallic symbol representing the erect penis of the God of earth. And if they put it in the right location, like they did in Washington, D.C., that it actually penetrates the JJ of Virgo because they replicated the city of Washington, D.C. as the three stars of Virgo. Um, it not only serves the purpose of proving that he's the God of Earth because what man could have intercourse with a celestial body, which should bring you back to the days of Noah when God destroyed the Earth because of that same offense when uh, the celestial bodies were coming down here to Earth to have sex with man. Now it's just the opposite full circle to where you have man down here having sex with celestial bodies <laughs> such as George Washington and Virgo. So it's the same offense. So if he destroyed the earth for that offense, it's the same offense that they're repeating now. So we really haven't advanced at all. We've just come back to the beginning. Are we supposed to advance? Do you think God made this and was like, you know what? I really, I really hope these guys get it this time around, you know, or do you think this is the first time? And, you know, I think only in time? my own personal opinion that, our mankind or civilization as we know it can only advance to the point to where they become a danger. And that would be having the ability to travel time. Because if you can travel time, you can change well, just about everything. And with man's technology, even God said, anything they put their minds to, they're able to do. And that's why he had to intervene in the Tower of Babel and these other things, not because the actual clay structure brick structure could reach into the heavens, but they was actually replicating the heavens by bringing the heavens down here on earth, making portals, establishing their domain in the heavens, which belongs to God. I mean, the earth is one thing, you know, Satan gets it for 6,000 years. He gets to be in paradise for, you know, six days in the garden. After that, his lease is up. Mm. You know what I'm saying? He right. automatically goes where he goes because it's written and that's the way it's always been and that's the way it always will be. He's getting the old so heave-ho. Yeah, it's it's one of those things. His time is up and it's no longer. But the heavens belong to God. And so you have these different civilizations replicating the celestial down on earth. That way they're not only a physical king, but they're also a celestial god because they are king of a domain which is in the heavens. On earth as it is in heaven. It's the same kind of ideology, and that's how they establish their domains. And each empire has their own little place in the stars as far as their domain. And if it's already claimed, they can't claim it. So they got to find a new constellation. And that's basically what Washington and the Masons did was find a constellation that hadn't been taken before and establish their kingdom as that constellation in the heavens. And so he's ascended his throne up into the heavens, just as it was foretold, and therefore, that's why you have war in heaven. Now, let me run something by you, Stephen. Um, 
it's a theory that so, another uh, YouTuber, uh, his name is Round Saturn's Eye. Um, he's heavy on, and he's not the only one, but he's the one that introduced it to me. But it's 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 that <laughs> it's it's real heavy, but it's right up your alley. I think you'll follow me. Uh, Saturn projects. Saturn is 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 a you know Satan's thing or whatever. I guess Satan's domain, and Saturn projects projects a signal onto our moon and the sig onto the dark side of the moon, and it bounces off of there and comes onto Earth. And that is how he controls the, you know, our Earth, what we see, stuff like that. Well, I, I don't think he's a long distance caller from what I've seen down here. I think he's actually dwelling down here and actually. Oh, right, right. Okay. Well, uh, but but that's paradise. That's you know, aside from that, but that's his. That's he. That's something he does. He has a machine on Saturn that projects this signal to the Moon, and it bounces off the Moon hits the earth and it bathes the earth in this satanic, you know, signal, you know what I mean? And that's, that, that's something that he does. And <laughs> there's a, this footage of Saturn supposedly, and there's this cube on it, you know, Saturn has, a yeah, cube. I've, I've seen, I've seen the cube and that is interesting. And that's probably where they get the, the whole ideology of Saturn's cube. But when, right. you, when you look at when you look at the cubes, it's it's nothing more than representations of magic squares because that's what the cube is. It's a it's a counterfeit of God's kingdom because God's kingdom is supposed to be four squared too, so it's also a cube. God's kingdom is a cube. Well, according to the the definition of it, it is, it is a cube. It's four square. Because those guys on YouTube talk about we're trapped in the cube, you know, and then when, you know, Jesus, Jesus had to enter our cube, you know, like time is the cube, but we're in the cube, you know, but, and God is outside of it. That's how he's ex able to exist outside of time. And, uh, he had, you know, he came to, uh, he came into the cube as Jesus, you know, or yeah, and then he left the cube, da, da, da. but do you think there's anything to that or do you think that's just a bunch of rubbish? Well, I don't know about a machine on Saturn or transmitting and bouncing it off the moon. I think it's more of a, a the, the reality of what's going on on the Earth and vessels having spirit beings in them that know the time is short and they're having their last big hurrah. Um, it could be microwave transmissions. It could be CERN. It could be, it could be a plethora of things. All I know is there is an evil spirit who rebelled against God and actually got man to follow him or at least a third of them to uh to follow him and rebel against god and i'm currently living in a government in the kingdom that has not only the obelisk as its national monument and not only a replication of a celestial kingdom down here on earth and not only the the founder declaring himself to be god but also involved in the the prophecy of you know genocide of the saints so everything's there. Everything fits. So I'm I'm more of a, more of a believer of the reality of, you know, like the temptation of Christ, Satan being right there talking to him in person, tempting him, and and uh, as far as you know, bouncing something off the moon. As far as a transmission, it's kind of odd how they would affect only a well, one third of. The living beings well it's a hot they talk about being a hologram you know like that that's it's some projection that that hijacks the reality for us and you know perverts it into what satan wants it to be or whatever you know it's an interesting well, idea that's all yeah that's, that's <laughs> well then that, that would that would mean that god has to do the same thing i mean as far as it it's sounds real very basic. gnostic it sounds very gnostic the idea of the demiurge that sits up there and tricks mankind into you know believing that yeah well if, if you hear satan's voice from a machine that's being beamed from S saturn off the moon well then god would have to work the same way because the whole principle down here is real simple it just people com complicated it's real simple you only have two voices okay man was created with a free will to choose which voice he would serve but there's only two voices down here there's the voice of the creator and the voice of the destroyer and it's all according to which voice you hear and obey that determines exactly if you're a son of light or you're a son of darkness. Okay, okay yeah. Whether your father is a serpent or your father is, well, I guess you could break it down to the word as a mammal. <laughs> are we mammals? Whether, well, yeah. Yes, we are. 
Because I thought we were not mammals, you know. Mammals are animals, right? Uh, no, mammals are those with mammary glands. Okay. Warm-blooded. <laughs> not unlike the reptile, the cold-blooded ones. So, <laughs> so you got you got two different beings down here, and that's the, what the great deception is. That you'll hear this all the time. It's like we are all children of God. We are all in the image of God. We are all offspring of God. That's the big deception. That is the major deception because just as you have two voices down here, you have two types of being, those born of the will and, and lust and, and the flesh of man and those who are born of spirit before time even began, born of the will of God. Okay, so you got two different types of beings. That's why with some people hear and obey the voice of the creator and some can't hear that. They, they just can't hear it. Hmm. But they do hear the voice of the serpent because that's their father. And that's why Christ even told, you know, some of these religious leaders of the time, you are of your father, the devil. Now, that specifically clearly shows exactly the truth of the matter. <laughs> that sure even though does. they look human beings and they look like everybody else and they claim to be, you know, just like God and just like everybody else, it's not true. Yeah, you, so you take that in, you, that verse and, and it's not... You mean like he's at, yeah, I, I, I'm sorry, yeah, you just said what you mean, but some people take that verse and don't take it that way. They take it to mean, you know. Uh, well, if they read the Dead Sea Scrolls and they read the, the War Scroll, they would see in a lot greater detail the explanation of the Sons of Light and the war between the Sons of Light and the Sons of Darkness. Dead Sea and Scroll, you, uh, uh, Book of Enoch is in there, right? Uh, yes, yeah, I think Enoch is included in the Dead Sea Scrolls. Yeah. That would have been an interesting book. I wish they would have included in there because it's really kind of interesting. But everything's for a reason, and I don't know. Maybe the the mystery would have been revealed before its time if Book of Enoch was included. So. Uh, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, they did supposedly find that thing in some you know cave or whatever. Whether or not that's true, who knows? But <laughs> but yeah, well, I'm buying it. <laughs> yeah, the, um, that Rob Skiba who was on the show. He, he always, they call them extra biblical texts that um, he has a fancy word for, it, but, you know, they, they sync up with the Bible, like they're referred to in the Bible. And and what Desmond Garrett uh, said the same thing when he was on the show. Um, the, the, some, of the, some of them are referenced in the Bible by people in the Bible as things that are true or something like that, and they back up what right. the Bible says, stuff like that. Some people have this stigma, like, oh, D Book of Enoch, get that out of here, you know, it's no good. Don't read it, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, it's sort of like Christmas and going to church on Sundays. They would yeah. rather listen to what the Pope tells them to do than what the Word actually says. So You're right, and uh, it's, yeah, it's those types of people that say that, you know. Don't show me any books of Enoch, okay? I've got the King James. <laughs> well, they got to remember, they got to remember pious people came together and determined what books were going to be in there. We'd be surprised, but we do know one thing. The Father gives us everything we need to know for the time that we're currently in. And I'm sure there'll be other books we'll find just as fascinating when it's all said and done. Yeah. Um, before I let you go, Stephen, uh, next week, uh, I got a call today from, uh, Neil Russell. You remember old Neil Russell? I sure do. Yeah. His, um, his book, uh, Newton's riddle was all about a prophecy that, uh, Isaac Newton made that, that goes, that, prophesied certain events happening in September of 2015 and he called today and said that he wants to come back on the show because he he wants to he said that God revealed to him a new thing he asked God to reveal to him you know give me some new information you know like please <coughs> reveal something new to me you know um, and he, he said he did and he said God gave him the key to unlocking the and what was this Stephen I texted it to you earlier Sarita Sarita something Sh oh, the 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 Schmitter Schmitter Schmita, the Schmita. Yeah, and I don't know yeah. what what exactly that is, but uh, he's going to explain it, and and you know how he has the key to unlocking it. So you know that's going to be awesome. But the base the sounds, sounds yeah, that sounds interesting. And the thing that I took from it was is um he he says that September is supposed to be the last seven years of the Earth. That's what Newton was prophesizing, I guess. That starts in, uh, well, next month, this month, September. Well, uh, then we'd miss out on a thousand years of rest. I was really looking forward to that. 
Well, and that's Stephen. I'm glad you're going to be here next week, right? <laughs> because you know, yeah. Um, I, no, it'll be interesting to hear though, because a lot of people are talking about it. I, uh, Benny yeah. Hinn and the gang, they was talking about the 25th of September, and then uh, somebody else was talking about the 24th of September, and somebody else was saying the 23rd of September, and then I was watching a show about uh, oh that guy that played Noah, and. Uh, it was funny because I was sitting there. I was like, okay, we got the 23rd, 24th, and 25th. And he was saying, it was, and this is right on TV when I'm thinking about it. He's like, God told me September 22nd. <laughs> I was like, oh, so now we got the September 22nd now. <laughs> so, it's there's be- a lot of things in the Matrix that's kind of interesting. But um, I don't know. I always look like today could be the day. But if they got something that's interesting, I'm always willing to listen to see what's going on. Yeah, and Neil Russell's a good guy. It's just the thing about Newton, I think, is what we're all not so sure if it's a real thing or not. And I'm speaking for myself here for sure, but I'm just not sold on the on the whole idea of Newton knowing the time and the place. You know, I, I don't know. Maybe Newton was deceived, yeah. uh, prophetic, yeah. prophesied. Well, we'll see, right? Uh, we got you know in the month of September if. Well, I actually I don't know because I think he said it, it's just supposed to start. It's something about the book of Daniel, and I'm ignorant about that, so I'm all ears. But you know, yeah, well, we'll see what we'll see what transpires. I mean, you know, there's a lot of people out there speculating about this, that, and the other happening. It's like, but I really don't understand why you can't be content with all the things that are going on, like right now, that you should be concerned with, like maybe the current genocide of the saints and. How is that possible that the saints are being persecuted like it says in the Bible they would in this time period if we're waiting for somebody else? It's like this one lady said, she goes, well, the Antichrist isn't here yet. And it's like, lady, I don't know where you've been, but Antichrist is currently the ones committing the genocide against the Christians. Yeah, it said the spirit of the Antichrist. She said said the individual, the individual that the Bible refers to as the Antichrist. And I said, well, if you read what it says about that individual, it says he was and is not yet is. Therefore, it can't possibly be a person in the future. It has to be a person who lived in the past in our current situation at the time of the end. When you see the saints being persecuted by the Antichrist, then you know that this beast isn't somebody who's going to come, but he was and he currently is not, but yet he is. And there's no more better description of Washington than somebody who was and is not yet is. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Well, if George Washington still in power, whether it's Republican or Democrat, they're still sitting in the throne as representatives of Washington. I guess that's the whole scam, right? They they set up Washington's domain and then they split it into two parties to duke it out. Yeah, and it's 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 all the same thing. It doesn't matter who 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 wins. They're sitting in the throne representing Washington. And that's what kills me when they say Washington was so so right. nice that he he stepped down because he didn't want to be king. It's like he built a, a an, an empire with his name that would always reflect that he is always the one in charge. He's the one that's declared to be God, not the Republicans or the Democrats. In Washington, they do the same we thing. trust. Washington, we yeah. trust. <laughs> not it's I. Divine providence. Not I That's and I, it. not me and Stephen. We don't trust in the George Washington. We trust in the yeah. I don't. I don't have. I don't have any love for someone declaring themselves to be equal to God. It's why I'm here is to say that uh, who is like unto my God? Nobody. Washington, not. Washington obviously thinks he is, and and the church won't say a peep about it. I mean, their only excuse is you can't pin that on Washington. It's like, well, he designed the city, okay? He's he's the one who it, it's his, you know. Why are they so uh, in love? Why do they care? Why are they so in love with this guy anyway? It's the indoctrination of yeah. schooling. And you think I'd think about twelve or thirteen years of mind brainwashing that this man can't lie, even <laughs> though the Bible says all men are liars. Right. You know, the whole story about chopping down a, a, a cherry tree, that story in itself is a lie, trying to show you how honest he was that he couldn't lie. <laughs> I mean, that's the deception we are, we're facing down here in this matrix. I mean, it's 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 always the double whammy for you. Should we set should we uh, try to set up another rule instead of Washington? Not necessarily get rid of Washington, but set up another one, you know? Set up the Protestant Sep, you know, city. Well, when you think about where they got their constitution from, I mean, they plagiarized everything. They just had tweaked it a little bit with Franklin and 
and Jefferson throwing in the, the God of nature in there. I mean, but as far as acknowledging that your rights and freedoms come from God, not man, that was a Protestant separatist uh, ideology. That was their baby that the Masons hijacked and tried to make it sound like they were so enlightened that they came up with these. No, no, no. They just plagiarized it off the original Protestant separatists that were there. Yeah, they, it it their own. they are God-given rights, not Washington-given rights. Exactly. <laughs> That's the point that everybody misses. And since man didn't give them to you, man can't take them away from you. They can only be surrendered. Right. Taken from you by duping you. Right. Anytime I get in trouble with the law, it's usually, I know why. You know what I mean? I know what I did wrong. You know? Yeah, I think most people actually do. Okay, well, I guess that was a dumb thing to say, but I don't care. <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, no, it's, 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 a, it's a valid point. Well, unless... Uh, I mean, if you have a conscience and, you, and you're one of the creations and we're going through a process of per perfecting ourselves, you know, then it's a matter of, you know, realizing that that's true. I guess let me let me the other shoe to that is I do a lot of real crazy stuff that, you know, you probably shouldn't do that you, other people might get arrested for. But when I actually do get arrested, I usually, you know, usually get get to go away, you know, sometimes. We call that youth. Youth, right? Yeah, I'm still hanging on to it, I guess. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you know, when they actually do finally get, put me in the cuffs, take me down and arrest me for something. Although I don't agree with it. <laughs> well, yeah, when justice is absent, then you can't really expect a system to be just. But it's and like, just... I, I guess the point I'm trying to make is... I, I got. I, okay, gosh, this is so stupid. I'm going to sound like a moron. That's fine. I already do. Um, but it's like it, God is talking to me. It's like, yeah, these jokers have me in handcuffs and da-da-da. But, God, you know, and I have these charges or whatever. You guys da, da, da. But God is like saying, you know, something else. God allowed, God is speaking to me in that cell. You know, he allowed me to be arrested for a reason, and I'm fully aware of it. You know, it's, it's hard well, yeah, to when I was, the words. When I was, uh, <laughs> when I was being led uh, in handcuffs, I think it was Channel Six or well, that, Channel Eight, whatever. That, that was a yeah, that was a clear reason. You know, like you were you were actually standing up for your beliefs. You know, not getting arrested for I don't know playing music too loudly or something. <laughs> yeah, I know, but but still, it was a, it was a funny memory to me because here I'm in handcuffs. I'm handcuffed to this other guy, and we're walking, <laughs> and the cameraman goes, "Why did you violate your uh, probation terms of probation or something like that?" And I said, "They don't have any authority over me," and that. It's so funny because I got the footage of it. The kid looks over at me, and he looks he looks at me like, "What are you saying, dude? You're in handcuffs. What do you mean they don't have any authority over you?" Right. <laughs> and it's like they're the ones breaking the law. I am here by choice. If I didn't want to be here, trust me, I wouldn't be here. Right. I'm the one that demanded them to arrest me in the first place. So yeah, what I was saying then was pretty much my anthem. If they don't have justice and they haven't been given authority by the creator and they've been given authority by a serpent who said, disobey God and obey me and I'll give you the power to rule. Right. Okay. Well, they don't, they don't have true authority. And that's why somebody was telling me, well, you're supposed to subject yourself to those who are putting authority over you. And it's like, well, God doesn't put antichrist in authority over me. Right. Okay. And it's it's one of those things. If if it's the serpent that gave them the authority, then I'm not I'm not bound to that authority. It's not even a real authority. Not saying that uh, anarchy is the way to go. I'm just saying the ones who currently have the persona of having power and authority have no power and authority. And you're just now beginning to see why they shouldn't have <clears throat> any power and authority because they're so corrupt. It's like the FBI is supposed to be investigating. They got their most cracked team on it now, checking Hillary. Sir. Well, excuse me. It's kind of late now to be doing your job. So I'm not too optimistic about their crack team, you know, doing their job now because why didn't they do it then? I mean, when you have reporters going into Benghazi and picking up evidence, okay, it kind of tells me they're not really wanting the truth. Yeah, dude, so. yeah, the whole thing is just a big, a big scam. But yeah, well, yeah. Uh, another, uh, another week in, uh, in Babylon. <laughs> another week in Babylon. Babylon <laughs> is falling. And that's why the, I love the way they wrote it. They, Babylon is falling, 
is fallen. Babylon is falling, comma, is fallen. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh, that's, that's kind of appropriate because it, it shows you the current day. It is, it is falling, and it has already fallen. <laughs> yeah, that's real strippy. <laughs> Yeah, once you once you get into the reality of how time really works and what comes first, everything fits into place as far as what's going on down here. And I think that was the purpose of the mystery God in the first place. I mean, he could have came right out and said, The mystery God is this. The physical man came first, he shed his blood, became the spirit that we call the creator, because he went back in time and called it all into being. And that was his inheritance as being God. That's wild, dude. Steven, it's been a pleasure, man. Thanks again for... Well, I always enjoy the opportunity and enjoy talking to you, John. Same here, man. Um, we'll have to... We'll have to... Uh... I'm looking forward to next Saturday to, to listen to the, the new information he's got. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'll be glad to have you there, Steven. I, I don't know what I'm doing here with this show, but I'm glad to have you here. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's... Trust me, it's for a purpose, and it's for a bigger purpose than either one of us can really comprehend, but it's necessary. Yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. I love what you do. I just think that I suck at this, so bear with me. Oh, no, no. Quit being hard on yourself. you got to look at yourself the way God sees you, not right. as you see yourself because, well, I mean, it's good to be humble, and it's good to acknowledge that we are corruptible flesh. And we'll be that way until this corruptible flesh will put on incorruptible immortality. But until then, we just got to be thankful that even though we don't find ourselves worthy, he did. Yeah, if that's true, man, if I'm worthy of doing something, that's great, man. And that's what, you know, that's what I prayed for is I got to help this show to do something, you know, for you, you know, let it be for you. Because I clearly don't know what I'm doing. So, <laughs> and they're, they're, be careful what you ask for. You just might get it. <laughs> yeah. And I love it, you know, um, yeah, Stephen, thanks. Too. Thanks again, man. I appreciate you. We love you. Um, love you too, brother. You take care of yourself. And uh, I hope that y'all benefits this show and prospers it and does what, exactly what it's supposed to do. Amen. And I'll talk to you next weekend. All right, Steve. God bless, man. All right. Later. All right.